today I'm joined by my very droopy plant. And as you've probably guessed from the title, I'm going to be sharing 25 things I've learned in 25 years. My birthday is coming up on the 13th of July, it's Friday 13th as well. So I wanted to share 25 things I've learned throughout my life so far as I'm entering this quarter life crisis. Let's get straight into it. I'm pretty sure this lighting is giving me major bum chin vibes. Number one is a day without laughter is a day wasted. There is absolutely nothing that a good laugh can't fix. And I love it in yoga when we're at the end doing this. And she says, spread a smile across your face. And you just think it instantly makes everything better. So just don't take life too seriously. Smile, laugh, wherever possible. It will make you feel 10 times better. Number two is nobody has their shit together. I have learnt that I don't think anyone ever really feels like an adult. You don't just wake up one day and think, boom. I'm gonna get a mortgage and I'm an adult and everything's great and I've got my life together. I think that everyone is figuring out life at all ages, whether you've got kids, whether you're single, whether you're in the career that you like. Just basically, if you accept that we're all in it together, we're all fighting our own battles, then life becomes a lot easier to handle. <laughs> Number three, if you're not feeling it, don't do it. As simple as that, I've learned to try not to just people please. You are the most important person, within reason. I mean, let's not be totally selfish, but your mental health is really, really important, so don't sacrifice your happiness and things that make you feel good just for the sake of other people all the time. I mean, sometimes you can. Number four is, if in doubt, make a to-do list. I am a to-do list freak, even if it just says, do a dark wash, go to the gym, wash your hair. <laughs> or if it's literally never ending with work stuff, personal stuff, all that life admin that we never do, like buying a new rail card or like changing your phone contract, like shit that we just never want to do. Always make a to-do list. It makes your brain feel more organized. I cannot not make a to-do list. I cannot not to make a mountain out of a molehill, it's gotta be done. <laughs> Number five is it's okay not to do what everyone else is doing. And I feel like I'm quite lucky in that I learned this from quite a young age. I've never really been one to compare and be like, oh, well, they're doing this. Growing up, my family, like we didn't go on holidays, like I didn't get brought a car when I was 17, like little things like that that other people around me were doing all the time. You kind of just accept pretty quickly that it's okay just to do whatever you're doing and not really worry about what other people are doing, not really get jealous, not compare. Life's too short, you've got to feel confident in making your own choices and the best way to do that is to just do it. Just do what you want to do, even if it's different, you'll see that it's okay, no one cares, and you can just live the life that you want to live. And the key message there is there is absolutely no right or wrong. I'm totally making this like way more points than 25. <laughs> Number six is it is okay to change your mind a million times. Similar to there's no right or wrong, there is no correct path or journey that you're supposed to be on. I've been an English graduate at university to working in marketing, to being a personal trainer, to being assistant manager of Sweaty Betty, to still working in Sweaty Betty part time, going back to marketing, doing content creation on YouTube. Like, you can change your mind a million times. Like, it doesn't matter. Your CV may be a total mess but you know what's right for you at the time and you just have to make yourself happy and do what feels right at that moment in time. Honestly, the thing I've learned most is life is too short to be miserable every day. Like I felt miserable and I'm not saying I have the most perfect life right now because we all have shit days. We all hate our job from time to time. We all hate this, hate that but there's a difference from that to like dreading what you do. This isn't just work related either, like it can be with friendships, relationships, anything. It's okay to change your mind, it's okay to change what you're doing, um, and don't be afraid to take that step. Number seven is box dyeing your hair is probably never a good idea. I learned it the hard way, I've now spent ages getting my hair back to being healthy and getting it done properly in a salon. Shout out to Susanna, Dylan and Lee in Nottingham. Number eight, quality over quantity with friendships. I think that this is a really obvious one and everyone probably knows, but I guess when we're growing up, it kind of feels like you have to have a big group and I've still got a lovely big group of school friends, but I really think there's probably people you can count on one hand who you trust your life with, you tell everything to, who support you 100% and who just absolutely love and couldn't live without. So treasure those people and never feel like you have to have more friends. It's the quality of the friendship that counts. And on that note, also accepting that friends will come and go and friends who you were necessarily best friends with, that will change. And that's totally fine because we adapt, we grow, we change as people and therefore, our friends are gonna change and just accept it and go with it. There's no point dwelling on it and beating yourself up for it. I'm getting such a dry mouth. Number nine is it is okay not to wear makeup and you don't have to apologize for it. 
This is something I'm still learning. I was that person who wouldn't even go to the gym without makeup. I feel like I've got quite a tired, pale looking face. And in the past, I've not worn makeup. People have been like, are you okay? Are you unwell? Are you tired? And I'm like, this is just my face. <laughs> I think as women, we feel like we have to wear makeup because it does kind of improve the way we look. Some could say we kind of produce this better version of ourselves. And it's a confidence thing. It's a self-conscious thing. We can put on makeup, feel a bit more confident. And therefore, when we have to go out in certain situations and not wear makeup, it can be scary. It can be daunting. I think, honestly, once you just take the plunge and go out without it, you realise that nobody is looking at you. Nobody cares. Nobody notices. Any stupid comments people make, just ignore them. Because we do look different. Like, if someone had only ever seen me wear makeup and then suddenly saw me without, I guess it would be a bit like, are you okay? <laughs> so I get it. But... Just feel confident in yourself, honestly, life is too short, that's the theme in this video, not to feel comfortable in your own skin, and I'm still learning, like, I wouldn't go on a night out, for example, or even go to, like, an important corporate meeting without makeup, just because it makes me feel better about myself, and then I can kind of be myself, if that makes sense. And there's nothing wrong with that either, there's nothing wrong with wanting to wear makeup at all, but I do think it's important not to be like, oh, sorry, I'm not wearing makeup today, I look awful, which I do all the time, so... I've not really learned that yet. Maybe in another 25 years. <laughs> Number 10 is you've got to create your own happy. People can add to your happiness for sure and help you find it, but ultimately it's got to come from you. If you're not happy with yourself, with what you're doing by yourself, then you're never gonna be happy with someone else, whether it's in a group of people or in a relationship, you've got to create that happiness yourself it's really difficult but you never want to be in a situation where you rely totally on someone else to not be a negative horrible mess <laughs> and number 11 which kind of links to number 10 is be happy for other people competition is my least favorite thing in the world i've never been a competitive person i've always hated it unless it's like competition with yourself and that's okay you've got to remember that someone else's win is not your loss do not compare yourself to anyone and therefore that will allow you to be happy for other people when they achieve things Even if they do things that you yourself want to do don't be bitter let it inspire you and motivate you to fulfill what you want to fulfill as well number 12 is communication is key in absolutely everything you do even at work but mainly in relationships i think that the key to a long-term relationship or a healthy relationship is communication you've got to talk to each other say what's on your mind say how you're feeling and it's okay to be an emotional mess in everyday life as well. It's okay to just cry and break down in front of friends, colleagues, whatever. Sometimes you need to communicate those feelings and that's the only way you're gonna be able to do it. I think a lot of people in friendships, relationships, hold on to bitterness because they don't communicate how they're feeling, they may be unhappy with something, or even just have something niggling that really annoys them, like they leave their shoes by the front door every day or whatever it is. <laughs> You've got to just say it. You've got to be like, can you stop doing that because it's pissing me off? And then, you will have a much healthier relationship, you'll be able to work through problems better, and life will just feel better in general. Otherwise you just feel so stressed and angry all the time and you'll just explode one day and it's, it's not gonna be pretty. Number 13, which may come as no surprise, I am a clean freak. I have learned this over the years, I never thought that I was, but it makes my brain feel better. Once I've cleaned everything, hoovered, the flat is sparkling, I can then get shit done, I can get on with my day. Tidying and cleaning is good for my well-being as a house plant. <laughs> Number 14 is comparison is the thief of joy and I've kind of touched on this in a previous point but honestly I still know people who compare themselves to people on social media or whatever it may be and we all go through that phase, I've totally been through that phase but it's just realising that you are your own person, you're nobody else and there's absolutely no point comparing your individual body, your individual brain to anyone else's, it's not going to get you anywhere in life, it's going to leave you feeling miserable and my new favourite quote is Confidence isn't walking into a room and thinking that you're better than everyone else or having to be better than everyone else. It's walking in and not caring. If you take away that pressure of comparing and being better than someone or looking the same as someone, then honestly you'll enjoy life so much more. Number 15, 
that was an easy one to do, is spend your money on experiences, not things. I don't own a car, I don't have expensive shoes, handbags, anything, but I have spent a lot of money on traveling, holidays, city breaks, everything. Experiences are so much more worthwhile, even as a birthday present. And honestly, traveling is far more valuable than any work experience. I know it might not look like it on your CV, but I really encourage you, especially if you're younger, to take time to travel. I know a lot of people who want to just get on with their career, save, buy a house, have babies, do all that stuff, because they say they can then retire early and travel then. But honestly, when you're 60, 70, you have no idea what sort of health conditions you're gonna have, or if other people around you might need you to stay in the UK, you have absolutely no idea. So if you're young, fit and healthy, now is the optimum time to explore the world. Worry about the adult stuff later. <laughs> and cheeky number 15 part two is when you're traveling, you realize how little you need. Pack so much stuff I didn't need, it's eye-opening. And yeah, when you're digging yourself a hole to go to the toilet on a mountain, then I think you realize that you don't need a lot to survive. <laughs> number 16 is never leave the house without a portable charger a bottle of water and lip salve. I'm obsessed with lip salve. And anyone who doesn't take water around with them, we can't be friends. How do you, how do you get through the day? Are you okay, hun? Number 17 is I am a fake extrovert. I feel like I'm quite a sociable, bubbly, fun person when I want to be, but I'm a total introvert. I'm such a home person. I need my space. I don't like group situations for a long period of time. And I just love the little things, like having my cup of coffee at home and reading a book, just having that time to be on my own. And I've kind of learned that that is okay. Like you don't need to be social 100% of the time and it's okay to withdraw from situations if you need to, because then when you do go to social situations, you're your amazing, fun, bubbly, fake extrovert self. <laughs> Number 18 is kind of health and fitness related, but don't get sucked into trends or fads. Do your own thing and don't ever let anyone feel like you're doing something wrong. That is so important. I just think that you need to just do what you feel is right for you at the time and don't do something just because everyone else is doing it, which is the current theme. But it's like, we've probably all had those people who are like, you do know that there's 500 calories in that one snack bar or you do know that an animal died for you to eat that. And you know what? I just don't need that kind of negativity and judgment in my life. Thank you, goodbye. Number 19 is you don't have to have goals. Honestly, it makes me want to punch someone in the face when they ask me what my goals are, whether it's career, life, fitness, health, whatever it may be. I'm not a goal-driven person and that's okay. Like for loads of people, setting goals is really motivating, but I just feel like it puts unnecessary pressure on and I'm just, I just don't work that way. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I don't set goals that I find that question annoying, but it just frustrates me so much when people ask what my goals are. It just feels like that typical PT style. You meet someone, what's your goal? It's just very annoying and I just don't like it. So I'm reassuring you that if you feel the same, I feel ya. And you absolutely do not need to be goal driven to achieve what you need or want to achieve. Number 20 is you can't do everything. You are not superwoman. You cannot do absolutely everything you want to do with the things that you can do and you have achieved or can achieve. You need to give yourself credit. Be proud, stop putting yourself down, be confident in what you do and what you've achieved. This is currently in progress. Note to self, be more confident, believe in yourself. Number 21 is everything is better with a tan, which I don't have right now, but I will because I'm going on holiday in two weeks. <laughs> Number 22, is being with someone since you were 14 means you're pretty damn lucky. <laughs> I know a lot of people might see it as settling and not experiencing things and totally there's many cons to being with the same person for a long period of time and potentially for the rest of your life. But there are also so many pros and I just wanted to reassure anyone who's in a long-term relationship if they're going through a bit of a iffy patch that don't let the fact that you're with that person mean that you must be settling. It just means that you obviously work together really well, you've worked through shit times, you have grown together, developed together, and yeah, it's a pretty special and rare thing, so enjoy it. And by the way, I picked that as number 22 because our anniversary date is the 22nd, and I'm cute like that. Cool, we're getting through it. I gotta get through this, I gotta get through this. Number 23 is that grief is the worst thing in the world, and to learn this, you have to go through it. It is absolutely horrendous, but if there's anything that puts life into perspective, it is grief. You really realize what's important, you realize not to sweat the small stuff, and it just puts into perspective what really matters in life, which can make you a better person, I think, and a stronger person, and I think it makes you a lot more compassionate as well. So if you're going through a horrendous period or struggling with grief, then it will feel better, I promise you that. And it's an experience, unfortunately, we all have to go through, but it really shapes who you are as a person. Number 20, 
four is accept change. Change is good. If we're not moving, we're just standing still. Is that that really ridiculously inspirational quote that doesn't make any sense to me? But seriously, if you accept things that are changing, go with the flow, everything happens for a reason, kind of. Go with it, everything will work out in the end, and it's exciting, life is exciting. If things change, it means you're mixing it up. I love change now, I have no idea where I'm gonna be living in a few years time, and it's really exciting. How many times can I say exciting? And that brings us on to number 25, the finale, the big one. It's not that groundbreaking, I'm sorry. But my last and final thing that I've learned in 25 years is to care less because it doesn't matter. That thing you're worried about, stressed about, are you gonna worry about it in three years time? Probably not. Then move on, put your energy into something else. Just care a little bit less, honestly. Why do we care about the fact that we've got this project that we need to do or we didn't reply to that email, like what really matters? It's not gonna matter in five years time. Life is too damn short to care about everything. Just channel your energy into the things that are worth caring about, like people and the world and yes. Woo! So that brings me to the end of 25 things I've learned in 25 years. I'd really love to hear things that you have learned in life, whether funny, stupid things or helpful or deep and meaningful. Please pop them in the comments below or drop me a message on Instagram. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna put the little face here if you enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up as well. I really hope that you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even have the track on it. Oh my god, I can't stop smiling. Okay, good.